Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we're going to see learning Python and today we'll talk about server sent events with Python. So let's start. So what are server sent events and how do they help us with web applications? Typically we have an actor that uh, requests something from the server. So requests go goes from the actor to the server. And in asynchronous applications, we don't receive the response right away. So for example, I want to make an order. I'm sending a request saying make an order, make an order. And I do not receive when my order will be delivered or how it will be delivered or if everything is all right, the time I receive my response. So that response, that response that goes to me does not contain all the information about the order that I'm about to make. Because in some systems we don't have a real time, well, it's not real time, but in some systems we need to talk to other services, we need to do something asynchronously. And that asynchronous messaging is not, well, it's, it's great for our application or our server, but maybe actors want to request the information on the changes. So for example, I make an order. I do not receive every piece of information that I need about the order right away. And in my system, I have a, a new record in the database or um, a, new, a new entity that uh, tells me that my status so the order entity and there is a status inside of that order with, which tells us pending. So pending basically tells us that our order is created, so it's acknowledged, but it's not saved yet. So we need to validate every piece of information. We need to do something with that. When I make an order, I do not see, well, I can't see status pending, but what if I need to listen to the change of that status? So I make an order. There is a new status called pending for my order, but when that status, goes from pending to validated, for example. So status is changed. I need to receive that that status was changed. But there is a problem. In web applications, typically you don't have a mechanism for that type of that type of request, response, what is that? I don't know. So you don't have a connection that goes from the server to the actor. So typically only actors open, so users or front end opens the connections to the server and requests something with their HTTP requests. And um, that's a really big problem because if our statuses will change and we need to change something in the UI, we need to change something in the way our page is rendered or something like that. It's going to be really complicated for us to catch that moment when our status was changed. Because once again, we were not able to send our uh, changes from the server to the user. However, right now we have that mechanism. And um, before I talk about server sent events, what we can do in addition is, if you don't want to use server sent events, what you can do is either use polling. So polling is one technique that allows you to just send a bunch of requests to the server with an interval between them. So for example, you send a request to the server, you wait 10 seconds, you send another request. Then you wait 10 seconds, you send another request. So there are obvious drawbacks in that uh, method because first of all, you send millions of requests and you don't know when your status will be changed. So you don't know if your status will be changed at all. Second of all, you, it's not real time. So when you send your request, you have the delay. And if your delay is a minute and minute is not that much, trust me, then um, you can, what you can do is send your request, receive that your status is still validated you say, oh, all right, I've got, I've got to wait another minute. But right after you receive your response, you're going to have your status changed to in transit, for example. And um, because of that, we were not like real time. We may have some delay between our status changes and we will have those. So polling is one, one solution for that problem, but it's not, um, it's not a great solution from my point of view. So you can use polling anytime you want, but um, in almost all of the applications, there are better ways to do it. All right, so the other solution is to use WebSockets because WebSockets open connections between both clients and, and uh, servers just like that. I can't put it anywhere, so I'm going to put it to the actor's leg, just like that. So we have a connection from the client and we have a connection to the client from the server and that is WebSockets. WebSockets are alright, but there is one problem is that we don't want our client to send any information to us because our client will use HTTP requests 
And uh, WebSockets are a little bit different because WebSocket is a two-channel connection. So you can go from the server to the client or you can go from the client to the server and send information in both of those ways. And um, for our case, we may use WebSockets and there is nothing wrong with that. A lot of people use them for that solution. But for our case, what we want is just a connection that goes from the server to the client. And that is called server well, all right, I'm gonna write it here. That is called server sent events. So server sent events, what is that? It's a mechanism that allows you to send uh, your events from your server to your client. So client opens up a connection to the server and then server says, all right, that connection is gonna last until I drain all of my events and the server just sends those events using that connection, but client can't send anything. So client just opens the connection, but it can't, send any data to the server. You can use WebSockets, but there is one big drawback with WebSockets is that you may be able to send some information. It's not like a really big drawback. It's not a really big minus for WebSockets. And I'll explain why WebSockets may be more beneficial to you. But server sent events basically tell you that you can send some information from the server to the client. And in our case, I have an application that uses those server sent events. So here we have main.py as our server and main.html with our event uh, source as um, a front end. What we have here is a fast API application or fast API application. We have app, we add middleware, so of course middleware. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, basically for security. It's not related to our event uh, server sent events at all. So I'm, I'll make a separate video on the course. So don't worry about that for now. Then we have our data generator. So data generator is a simple Python generator that yields a dictionary with data and status inside of it. So data and status is pending, in transit and finished. Both of those, not both, of, but all of those yields have a 10 second pause between them. So it's to simulate that we have something going on. So for example, when we create our order, it's in pending status. Then we wait for 10 seconds in order to in order to, I don't know, check that everything is all right. Then we go to in transit. Then we wait another 10 seconds and then our order is at our front door. We finish our order with status finished. And we wait for 10 seconds between all of those. All right, so next we have app get. We have uh, a simple route in fast API, just a simple route and we return event source response. So that response is not in Fast API by default, but we need to install SSE Starlit library in order to work with it. However, you can achieve the same things with the normal Fast API responses, but I have been using event response, event source response because it's just easier. So we, the only thing that you need is to install the library. It's a lightweight library. Then you return that response and you provide a generator inside of the response constructor. And uh, then you just generate your data and basically that's it. So that's the only thing that you need. Then we run our server and that's it. So we just generate events using event source response and uh, they, yield, they are yielded from our data generator. Let's run our program and um, let's go to front end. In data generator, you may use anything that you want. So you may request some separate resources. You may query your database or do whatever you want but then yield your events and they will be sent directly to the client. Here in um, our normal HTML, we won't have what? We won't have body with a script inside of it. And um, that script has event source and the script has event source object inside of here. So event source allows us to use those server sent events. And uh, as you can see, the API is really, really similar to WebSockets. So if you didn't work with WebSockets before, then API is similar. So it's basically the same API from the WebSockets. There are some minor changes, but what you can do is uh, try event source or ev server sent events. And if you don't like them, you can switch to WebSockets anytime. But of course you need to switch both uh, front-end and back-end applications. Event source, so what is that? We create our event source and that uh, class is gonna help us to work with server sent events. We open the connection to that URL and that URL is you can see here, so app get. Then I'm saying event source on message is function from event and we just alert our event.data. So event has um, tons of things like origin, 
Mm. Status, I think, I don't know, maybe status, but origin is origin is there for sure. But data is the most important thing for us right now. So data is the data that we sent from our client. And the only thing that you need to do now is just to run our application. So it's relatively simple. We just uh, let's do it like that. Relatively simple. As you can see, state is pending. Then I close for it. Uh, then I close that alert and uh, need to wait for another 10 seconds in order to get my status changed, which is in transit. And I do not make any requests from the client. So as you can see, there are no requests here. But the server sends the data to our application. As you can see, state is finished. And with that technology, with that uh, thing, we can easily receive events from the server without any polling, without any additional exhausting requests, and it's really easy to use. But of course, there are some problems. The first problem is that not all the people know about it. So it may be a problem for your application if you want to introduce those events. Second problem is that sometimes it's better to use WebSockets because some browsers do not um, support event uh, event source and um, server sent events, but I think the only browser that does not do it now is uh, is what? Internet Explorer? Yeah, so you need to check for compatibility with other browsers. That's really important. And um, aside from that, I don't see any drawbacks. Well, there are some drawbacks, like you can open only six connections on your browser, but I don't think that for major applications, it's going to be a problem. So, but yeah, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Yeah, it may be is, but it depends on how you structure your code, how you structure your event, uh, how you structure your events and how you do all of that thing, all of those things. And um, aside from that, it's a really great technology that you can use in order to notify your client when you have some change in your application. So thank you for watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. Bye bye.